Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to my March 2024 reading wrap up. So I'm actually doing this quite a bit late. I'm actually referring to my blog for notes on this. All of these reviews are on, uh, written reviews of these are on my uh, blog and my Goodreads. Because uh, it's currently April. No, it's May, sorry, it's nearly June. So I've left this a little bit late, but we're gonna go back and look at the, the blog to see what I read. So, Dane reads. Becoming by Michelle Obama. So I actually listened to this via audiobook, which she narrated herself, which added bits to it, took bits away. There were a few bits where she sang, which was kind of weird. She can't really sing, uh, but it was also certainly very emotional when she was talking about like her loved ones and people who passed away and things like that. Um, I really enjoyed, I've read Obama's, well, Barack, I've read two of his books, I haven't read his latest one. Um, Michelle, I think, is a better writer, but I think that's just more based on the things she studied and the background that she's from. Um, it felt more like a little conversation rather than anything else. It was warm, had a lot of heart to it. Um, and it was more about just how society has treated her as a black woman uh, with an opinion, uh, someone from a working class background who dared to step out above the precipice and to share her views, you know. Um, but overall, I gave it a pretty strong 3.5 out of 5. Um, it was a good one. The best way to, to approach this one is to go in without any prior expectations of what you're going to get or even prior expectations of what uh, Michelle Obama and her life are like. So, yes. Okay, Sherwood Smith, Sky Pirates Over Oz. So this was the last in a three book uh, trilogy, obviously three books. Um, mind you saying that, the, the, the Hitchhiker's Guide, that was a trilogy in five parts, uh, and then there was a sixth book. But anyway, uh, it brings a modern touch to The Wizard of Oz. Like the main characters in this are descendants of Dorothy Gale. Like they've got electric guitars and stuff, which I think is a nice little touch. Um, this one they actually, as you can guess from the name, I guess from Sky Pirates Over Oz, they spend a lot of time in the sky. And so you get to see a lot of the sort of sky-based lands of Oz that we've heard about before but haven't seen for a while. Uh, there's a land of dreams as well that's a little bit on the nightmarish side. And for me, I found it quite cool to note that this book, uh, it was... The first two books in the trilogy were traditionally published and this third one was self-published. And I don't know why, um, but that kind of explains why there's a different illustrator on board with this one as well. But there's no kind of lack of quality or anything like that and it does a real good job of uh, wrapping up the trilogy. I actually found that the, the Sherwood Smith trilogy kind of brought my love for Oz back. It, it's been missing for a while and so it is good to kind of have it back and to read books that had, you know, had the magic of Oz to them again. I gave it a four out of five. Oh, I should also mention Trouble Under Oz by Sherwood Smith. This is part of the problem of me going onto my blog to, to grab the reviews because they weren't necessarily published uh, in the order that I read the books, if that makes sense. So Trouble Under Oz, the review of that was published afterwards, even though that's the second book. It uh, builds on the, the good work she did with the first book. Uh, and actually what's quite cool is it has this sort of simultaneous storyline of where we see what's going on in our world. Um, the two sisters that were in the first book, they have to split up. One has to stay behind to kind of cover the other one's tracks while she's in Oz. And the other one goes to Oz to complete the quest. Um, so yeah, I've got here. Uh, the other one stays at home alone and tries to justify their absence to their parents and the lady next door who's supposed to be looking after them during a snowstorm. We get the gnomes again. A uh, little bit of the ongoing disappearance of Dorothy Gale, which gets addressed and solved in the third book. Some uh, familiar friends, some familiar faces along the way. Uh, it's good. I mean, I quite like the storylines with the gnomes as well. I like going underneath Oz. Um, so, you know, book two underneath Oz, book three in the in the skies above Oz. I gave The Trouble Under Oz by Sherwood Smith a three out of five, no, a 3.5 out of five. Okay, 3001, The Final Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. So as you can tell, this is the fourth and final book in the Odyssey series, beginning with 2001, and then there's some books following on from that. This book's really cool because in this one, um, Frank Poole, his body gets recovered from space and he kind of gets resurrected a thousand years after his death. Um, and we get to see what society is like in a thousand years through the eyes of somebody from our own time, you know? Uh, so there's some really good sort of speculative stuff there. I've read online that a lot of people don't think of this as one of their favorite Arthur C. Clarke books. Um, you know, it's towards the end of his career and people kind of think that he, he lost his mojo a little bit, I guess, but I personally really enjoyed it. Uh, I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. For me, it was the best in the Odyssey series. Um, I put, uh, the main character reminded me a little bit about, of uh, Fry and Futurama because it's a similar thing of him going a thousand years into the future and then coming to terms with the differences, you know. Then we have The Art of Discworld by Terry Pratchett and Paul Kidby. So this is kind of a short but sweet book. It's pretty much a bunch of illustrations that Kidby created of various characters of the Discworld as well as some of the locations as well. Um, I did say in my review of this that 
it does tally really well with how I envisioned all of these places and, and these characters, but I don't know how much of that is just because I'm so familiar with Kidby's illustrations, you know? So, um, yeah, it was fascinating to read as a Discord fan. It also had the death of Rats in, who's there knocking a knockabout underneath my arm. Um, 4.5 out of 5 from me, very beautiful book. It's not going to take you long to read. It does have some text along with the illustrations that tells you a bit about the characters, but again, if you've been a Discworld fan for ages, none of this is going to be new to you, but still very much worth reading. All right, then we have The Wind from the Sun. This is just an Arthur C. Clarke short story collection. A lot of these stories have been published elsewhere, um, and I'd read one or two of them. I, I put in my review, it's not his most notable collection, but there are still some cracking stories there, especially if you're a big Arthur C. Clarke fan. Um, I particularly liked one of the earlier pieces, which has a central message in it that lines up nicely with veganism. Uh, if you're passionate about animal rights and you're interested in the food that we eat, it's one to read. Uh, he had a similar thing actually going on, just for a short passage in 3001. Uh, I will be doing a full review of that so check that out where I'll, I'll kind of talk a little bit more about that um if you're new to his work you'll want to read you know the odyssey series rendezvous with rama my personal favorite but uh, if you're in the market for a short story collection it's one to check out okay then we have ask an astronaut by tim peak and this is literally a bunch of question and answers with tim peak who is um a, uh, an astronaut british astronaut uh, it's interesting, but it is also basically just a list of Q&As. Like, it reminded me of just being on Quora, um, and it does have that vibe to it. Uh, he actually asked people to send in their questions as well. It is kind of arranged in such a way that it makes sense to read it linearly. But yeah, it is still just reading a bunch of questions and answers, so not necessarily as engaging as it, as it might have been. You do have to bear in mind, Peak isn't a writer. Um, this is his second book, but his first book was like a photo collection. He's more of a photographer than a writer, if anything. Um, but yeah, it's still interesting stuff. I just think there would be better ways for the information in this book to be presented. I gave it like a week 3.5 out of 5. Okay, Pirates of the Asteroids by Isaac Asimov. So this is the second book in the Lucky Star series. Uh, Asimov actually wrote it under uh, the pseudonym, I think of David, no, Paul French, I think it was. Um, but I actually think that it's some of his best work. Um, and this is one of the best amongst the best. The idea behind this, basically, David Lucky Star, his parents were killed by space pirates. And in this book, he kind of goes out to try and hunt some of the pirates down. Um, and we have a cracking adventure along the way. He also has a companion called Big Man, who is a Martian who's who's short and has a very fiery temperature. And I fucking love Big Man. He's great. Uh, I like the fact that this story, and indeed all the stories in this series, they combine action, thriller, and mystery together, as well as sci-fi. Um, I consider this to be one of the best books I read this year, and I gave it a 5 out of 5. I loved how Lucky used science and turned it into a weapon to take on those pirates. All right, The Sands of Mars by Arthur C. Clarke. So... This is an interesting one, basically it is another Arthur C. Clarke book in which a character goes off to Mars basically where they're kind of terraforming Mars and, and um, beginning to build like a, a establish human civilization over there. What's interesting is that the heart of this is a, an author character, Martin Gibson, who basically is an Arthur C. Clarke self insert. Um, he gets the opportunity to take the first passenger trip to Mars and we get to see the voyage there which is maybe the first third of the book, followed by what Martian society is really like through the colonialist as well but along with all of this um you know all the science fiction and the space travel there's also a very human element to it i mean gibson as a character he has his flaws he has a kind of haunted past he has some interesting relationships with some other characters and one in particular that i can't really give away because it happens right at the end of the novel um overall i think it's like it's an adventure story with science and human relationships at its heart which is what what clark does best really i gave it a four out of five it's uh is up there within his top 20% of books for sure. Then we have We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. So this was probably the best book I've read so far this year. It's a classic and it's a classic for a reason why. I've read The Haunting of Hill House before and that was okay, but this one really blows that one out of the water. We're basically following the remnants of a family that survived a scandal in which someone put arsenic in the sugar and killed off half of their relatives. Uh, we sort of see this happening slowly because to begin with we're just sort of thrown in at the deep end we don't really know what's going on and then it's kind of revealed as we go along through uh, the unreliable narrator uh, it's the youngest of the the two sisters who's still living in the family home with their uncle they the villagers in this distrust them dislike them they're very horrible to them um and that all culminates in this scene that's just brutal towards the end um it's kind of reminiscent of the lottery. We see the evil that man is capable of, uh, especially when when people kind of come together en masse 
you know? So yeah, I gave it a 5 out of 5. Alright, then we have Picture You Dead by Peter James. This one for me was a 4 out of 5. This is another one of his Roy Grace uh, crime novels, police procedural novels. Uh, and in this one, there's it's all to do with the art world, basically. Uh, somebody finds uh, a painting at a car boot sale, and when they take it home, they leave it in the sun. And the sun kind of melts this painting that's at the top, and they see a painting beneath it. Um, and then they discover that's worth a few bob. They actually don't like the painting that's on top. They only buy it because of the, the frame that it's in. They want to reuse the frame. Um, yeah, and then there's an art collector who will stop at nothing to get his hands on that painting. And that includes hiring some very reprehensible people to go and track it down, which is bad news for our main two characters who are just normal people, you know? So yeah, four out of five. Did enjoy. I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend it because the thing with Roy, the Roy Gray series, you probably do want to read it in order. They do get better as they go on, but the thing is, is as well as the standalone mysteries, you also have this stuff, the personal lives of all the cops. And by this point, a lot of stuff has happened um, that you're just going to spoil yourself if you jump into this point in the series. Then we have The Prisoner by B.A. Paris. So this is my second of her books. I've read Behind Closed Doors before and loved it. I think that was actually her first book, and I was sent a pre-release ARC copy of it. And she's since gone on to be pretty well known, but to me, she's the best kind of psychological thriller writer out there, you know, in the vein of all these Gone Girls and The Girl on the Train and whatnot, B.A. Paris is at the top of that field for me. Um, the only thing that's a bit weird is she seems to have made a career out of, about writing about female characters who are like trapped in relationships that look normal to the outside world but really aren't, to the point at which they are prisoners, literally in behind closed doors. In this one, she's not as much of a prisoner but she still sort of is. Um, she ends up marrying somebody, the main character, Amelie, ends up marrying someone as part of a scheme that should benefit them both. But then it all goes a bit tits up. Uh, the narrative starts ha hopping backwards and forwards through time. So we see this relationship with her husband developing, but also she gets kidnapped and she's being held ho like hostage for ransom and she doesn't know who by. So these two things are kind of happening simultaneously and then they all come together at the end. Um, I, did put, I did put here as well, I want to read this little paragraph because I think well, actually, no, I'm not going to because it's a spoiler, but she does all right. She's quite a resilient character. Uh, I'm sure she ends up with some pretty hardcore PTSD, but um, considering what could have happened, could have been a lot worse for her. So there we have it. Those are all of the books that I read in March. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.